Thank you, Abosal. The next question says, how true is the claim that Islam was spread by the sword? Huh? How true is it? Okay, all the Muslims with the sword, pull it out. <laughs> Here's my sword. Oh, I can see better now. Right here, man. If we wanted to, if we wanted to spread Islam by the sword, we would have all brought our swords and hid behind the door. And as soon as the non-Muslim came in, we're just ready at the door. Bam! Chop off his head. Next, come on, don't tell him. Don't let him see. And just have a massacre over here. Kill everybody. Say, all right, Islam was spread by the sword. We communicate Islam to everybody. Look at him, dead on the ground. Come on now. Wake up and smell the coffee. That I drunk already. And drunk is the right, uh, drank, I'm sorry, yeah. I have drunk. If you say I have drunk, it doesn't mean you're drunk, by the way. It's the right tense for have, when you use have, the past participle. I don't know why I'm saying this right now. But, <laughs> because though sometimes I say this and the people are like, uh, Muslim, drunk? Wait, you have drunk this before? They, their mind shifts to drinking alcohol. No, I have drunk the coffee. Correct, it's a correct tense. But, um, yeah, so we have, Islam has not spread by the sword. Now, I cannot sit here and lie to you and say there was no war involved in Islam. That would be another lie. Absolutely, there were many wars within Islam and the spread of Islam all over. Whether Muslims were the attackers or the ones being attacked. Okay, but then that was the case with so many other ideologies and religions. But war was not the focal point. War was part of the process that was inevitable. And it was never means for someone to enter into Islam. It was never means for someone to enter into Islam. What happened is, because Allah decreed that the religion has to be permanent. Okay, let's just be very factual here. So, based on the line of sequence of events. We mentioned prophets after prophet after prophet. Scriptures were distorted. Prophets passed away. We don't have any footage of Jesus. We don't have any footage of Moses. We don't know anything. At some point, one final prophet will be sent. His message must be preserved. And the followers must exist. If the non-Muslims decided that we Muslims are annoying people, let's eradicate all the Muslims. And war was not allowed in our religion. We were not allowed to defend ourselves. Then the non-Muslims, and they tried, they could have come and killed all the Muslims, and then people will no longer have the message of Islam available until the day of judgment. So Allah made it a point that the people and Muslims and the religion will remain available. Even if that required that when these Muslims are being attacked, they will pull out the sword and then defend themselves. Or that they had to reach out for the rest of the world. So then that was part of the process. That does not mean that any Muslim ever said, you believe in Allah or I'm going to kill you. Because you, I said earlier, can you force belief on someone's heart? So the sword is not going to fix it. The sword is never going to fix it. So don't confuse the fact that they were, there was warfare by saying that that was means for Islam to spread. Islam was spread through the communication. The preaching of the message and more important, the example of the good Muslims that they left and the impression they left on non-Muslims. The merchants who used to go around and be honest in their dealing in their business. The people were impressed. This is how Islam came into so many countries and it remains to be until now. Another side point, if Islam was spread by the sword, then how is it that we still have Jews and Christians in so many Muslim countries that coexist? By now, 1400 years into Islam, don't you think we would have finished them off already? I mean, come on. Especially now with, you know, uh, weapons of mass destruction and all times of advantage. You could have killed everybody a long time ago. And we'd just be running this earth on our own, just running around Muslims only. Hey! <laughs> no, no, Muslims. Hey, hey, let's party. Drink coffee only, no alcohol. <laughs> but it doesn't happen. I mean, we're living together. So, no, it wasn't spread by the sword. In fact, if anything, we were exposed to the most swords in the world. Check history. Check, check the, you know, the missionaries and the, what, the crusaders. I mean, these are facts. The Philippines. The Philippines was a Muslim country. It was a Muslim country. And the crusaders forced Christianity upon the Muslims of the Philippines. Only Mindanao maintained and held strong, so they remain to be the way the Muslims are. But you know, the rest of the place, they just, they went with it, which is okay. 
But these are facts. I mean, I'm not picking on the Christians, but do realize that this is something that happens. And Muslims are always being exposed to someone forcing their religion upon them. More so than we are accused of forcing our religion upon others. So it's just part of history. And it doesn't make us a violent people. Again, I've said it many times. We're not allowed, we are not allowed to kill an insect. You know an insect that you find in your house, unless it is going to harm you, you're not allowed to kill it in Islam. If it's an insect that's going to infest your, in your rice and ruin your, your food, then you're allowed to kill it and you're not allowed to burn it. But if it's not going to harm you, if it's a moth, you can't just see on the moth and smash that thing. It's forbidden in our religion to kill a butterfly or a moth for no reason. You can't hunt for fun. If you're not going to eat that what you're hunting, you're not, you're not allowed to hunt either. I mean, this is how much we value a soul. The soul of other creatures, trees, let alone another human being, whether he is an atheist, agnostic, Christian, but it doesn't matter. We have no right to spill this person's blood in our religion. No right. The Prophet Muhammad explicitly said, you will remain within the margins of this religion until you spell, spill illegal blood. Once you kill one innocent soul wrongfully, you are on the verge of entering the hellfire. You're giving up on your religion, on Islam. I don't care what people do in the name of Islam. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't. We are, we're not violent as people are making us appear to be. Are there violent Muslims? For sure. These violent Muslims are killing Muslims, by the way, more so than they're killing non-Muslims. In the name of Islam. It's a crazy thing. But these are sick people. I'm not responsible for sick people. These brothers are not responsible for sick people, nor are these sisters. So you see a hijab, you see a beard, don't stereotype and put us all and paint us with the same brush. It's, it's impossible. It's not fair. And we, we never spread it by the sword. No, can you say the first two words? Do you mean what? Do you mean? Do you mean? <laughs> what kind of accent is this? British or American? Do you mean? Wait, do you mean, okay? No, well, well, let me tell you what I mean. <laughs> I'll explain myself. I like that anyways. Sorry, say. You have the toughest job in the world, man. If I were you, I'd quit. <laughs> Try to do this instead. Anyways, no. Look, I, I said it very clearly. That's why, see, I'm, not, I'm the type who doesn't... Personally, I don't, I don't lie when it comes to religion. I say it as it is. And then if the people understand, two thumbs up. If they don't understand, too bad. It's not my job to change or twist anything for the people to become happy and clap for us. I said, war has been part of Islam. I never took that out. Did I? I said it explicitly. However, it is not the objective. The objective was the availability of the religion globally. There was no internet. There were no phones. There was no way for Islam to reach, for example, Africa or India or any other country on Australia, on the other side of the globe, unless Muslims were present. So the message of Islam was to spread. It was not with the sword. However, it was in the following order. And that I didn't elaborate on earlier because I don't want to give another lecture for each question. But now that it's here, I will say, the command of the Muslims was, that when you go to this other country, you invite the people to Islam. Because you need to be available in all of these countries. However, it, there's no fighting involved. Okay? If they accept Islam, Alhamdulillah, through the good preaching, through the message of one God, which is supposed to be universal and agreeable to all mankind. If they said, no, thank you, we are not interested. I'm a Christian, I'm proud of being a Christian, I don't want to be a Muslim. No problem either. And no sword either. So the second option was what is known as paying taxes. Okay, the Muslims will have to be in charge because this is the religion of God. Again, we're always on the point that this is the true religion of God. It has certain rights and power that others don't, they don't enjoy. Bottom line of things. So now you can live under our protection. Mind you, the taxes that the non-Muslims paid ensured their protection, security, and the availability of their temples and places of worship. Meaning we didn't throw away their church and say you can just live here but you cannot worship. Everything was allowed to remain the same. 
However, it had to be, this is outside the Arabian Peninsula as a disclaimer. However, they were allowed to remain, but now you pay in taxes to the Muslims. If somebody wanted to attack these non-Muslims, it was the job of the Muslim army to protect them. Because they're paying taxes to the government. If they refuse the first option, and they refuse the second option, then the only other option left is that you want war. You don't want to accept, and you don't want to surrender, because of the power, there's a presence of power. So now, if a country wants to invade another country, they can try to do it peacefully. Say, look, you guys have nothing, no tanks, no airplanes, we got everything. So if you want to be just, just accept, let us manage this business. If you say no, we refuse, we, what, then what's going to happen next? You're basically asking for war, right? Isn't that what happened between certain countries? They wanted to invade them, they said no, I mean, they're asking for war. So then war was established. Now time out, time out, just in case your mind is going there. Let me tell you what warfare is in Islam. The instructions of the Prophet Muhammad were as such. No house was allowed to be burnt. No tree was allowed to be burnt. No livestock were allowed to be killed. No women were allowed to be touched. No women were allowed to be killed. No children were allowed to be killed. Any religious figures among the other people, from religious figures, priests or whatever you call them, no one was allowed to touch them. The only people Muslims were allowed to fight with were soldiers on the battlefield who said, we're not going to surrender, we're taking this to the arms. So then we, they were allowed to fight with those people. And as Allah says in the Quran, if they incline towards peace, then go for peace. Because it wasn't about spilling blood. It wasn't about counts of bodies like people do today. It was about maintaining peace. Why? The religion had to be available. That's it. And you will find that in most of these cases, the people willingly entered into Islam. And they enjoyed the rulership of the Muslim rulers who were very just, as mentioned yesterday by the Shaykh in his lecture. Justice was established among everybody. Today we have lost it, unfortunately. So it was never about the war, but war was part of it. Every country in the world is entitled to have it. Why do they have armies and marines and navy? Why? I would say if somebody argued, well, well, wait a second, the fact that you have weapons it suggests something. So oh, no, let, tell your country to throw all their weapons in the ocean. And then when the neighboring country wants to invade, tell them, here, slap me on the other face, on the other cheek. Do it. Do it, you're so benevolent. Tell them, come invade our country, we're just going to be chilling here, no problem. We will not fight you back. No one in the world does this. But when it comes to Islam, oh, look at the Muslims. Excuse me, buddy. What is this double standard? If it's okay for you, it's okay for us. But we have at least guidelines and some decency. We don't know bomb no milk factory, people in the wedding, people in the funeral. I mean, people are already grieving over a dead man. They bombed them and killed the rest. This is crazy. This is never allowed in our religion. So we have some etiquettes of war. Today, people have war with no etiquettes. But then they want to point the finger at Islam. That's nonsense. I hope that answers the question.